back on the Pete the Planner Show. I am your host of the program, Peter the Planner. On this segment, we're going to deal with uh, the Repeaters group. And you're like, what's the Repeaters? It's a private group on Facebook. It's free to join. Let's go to the Repeaters, where we just talk, us and you, and we talk about important things. And it's all a part of our program, Repeat, which uh, is part of our podcast. So go subscribe at iTunes to uh, the Pete the Planner Show. On Tuesdays, you get this radio program. On Thursdays, you get Repeat where we dive deeper into topics. Sometimes they're financial, sometimes they're not. Nicole uh, Frankowski is my uh, co-host of that. Nicole, this week on Repeaters, we asked the question, who is your financial role model? And the Repeaters had some really good answers. Yeah, they did. I, I, you know, I was reading this one, and I think I've talked about this on the show before. I have a, a quick tear trigger. Oh, same. Like I am, like, I'll get choked up real quick. I got choked up reading this, and I I might get choked up reading it on the air, even though I've now read it three times. I love this. So the question was, who is your financial role model? And uh, a guy by the name of James answered. And oftentimes you hear people say their parents, right? And Nicole and you even mentioned on uh, repeat this week that your dad is a, a financial role model of yours, and yeah. it was great. And you said why, and it's lovely. Uh, and I'm not dismissing that, but sometimes when people give a little more of the story as to why, not that his, this story is more remarkable than your story, but this is a pretty remarkable story. You know, you just kind of set it up to like the no offense. <laughs> yeah, I did. No offense, but this person's story is better than yours. Yeah, that's what, that's what you just said. It is. It kind of is. I mean, it's better than any story I have. I was going to say, yeah. I mean, this is a better story than any story I have. I'm going to read it. It's better than your story, too. You didn't have to call it out, though. <laughs> it's so true. I'm sorry. Oh, okay, we'll, we'll let other people judge. So <laughs> here we go. Dude, just read it. <laughs> uh, the, J- the question was, who is your financial role model? And James writes, my parents, they came to this country in 1986 at 37 years old, burning up all their savings to get here and starting at zero. They worked odd jobs and minimum wage until they could build a life. Eventually, they were able to bring their two children, my sister and I, who were eight and six, uh, and we came over in 1987. So this guy's parents worked here for a year without their kids to establish a life in America. Uh, and and, I, and the, the guy goes on to say that he was left in the care of his grandparents back in India. Since then, they bought and paid off a house. This is from 1987. They bought and paid off a house helped put three kids through college, supported literally hundreds of people through charity work in India and other countries, and now are retired with more than enough cash flow through pensions and Social Security to enjoy their golden years. Uh, The the commenter continues, I am 37 years old now and cannot imagine starting over at zero to try to build a life for myself and my family. To face that pressure at that age with no safety net in a new and sometimes hostile country and to overcome it when a lot of their contemporaries who grew up here are struggling to do the same is amazing to me. They never had personal finance talks with me while I was growing up, but because they were also learning along the way, their example with spending on how to align it with values has been the most important financial lessons I've ever received. I've added a lot of other pieces to my thought process along the way, but they formed the base. Dude, Nicole, that's amazing. It is amazing. You know, and I, I was kind of half joking about this story's brother. But but he just tells a good story, right? Because you have a story that, yeah, there, there's not the aspect of probably starting at zero and being in a new country, but the base is still there. What our parents do, and that's actually what we're talking about next week on repeat, of, repeat is what did you learn from your parents, right? And uh, we learned powerful lessons like this. There just wasn't the added drama of being a, an immigrant right. and starting at zero. But man, that's remarkable, isn't I, it? Yeah, it's that whole of our financial successes, I think we mimic versus either following the financial successes of our parents or we mimic you know, the opposite of whatever trials and tribulations that they had. Yeah, it's remarkable. It what? is. Uh, what other one? What, what comments did you like? I, we we, we, um, we asked a few different questions in the last couple of weeks on the repeat uh, repeaters page. Who's your financial role model? We talked about um, who uh, or, or what are your work life balance tips? 
Right. And I think it's cool because this gives such an organic place for people to comment in a, you know, a secure place where people are there for all the right reasons. So I think in light of that is why we've gotten so many great responses to the two questions that we've posted. Um, It's been cool to see that a lot of them have been role models are grandparents and parents, just people paving the way by just doing what they were supposed to. Um, there was one one comment um, that, and they noted that even though this this was you know a couple of years back, the, her, the, her grandparents paid for everything in cash and paid off their home in a year. What they, they paid off their home in a year. So that means that their salary was larger than the value of their home. Yes. So they paid for everything. She says, my financial role models are my, ma- my maternal grandparents. They are, simply put, amazing. They paid off their house in a year. They paid for cash for everything and never used credit cards. My grandpa was one of the most generous people I've ever met and would often donate to many people and causes anonymously. My grandma, who is still living, is a frugality queen and can make a dollar stretch like no other. See, that's great. Even like, I, I'm just sitting here thinking, uh, Nicole, now I'm thinking out loud, uh, that Man, it seems pretty unrealistic to be able to pay off your home within a year of buying it. But I don't think the point is, well, if you can't do that, you're not doing it right. But it's definitely inspiring. Right. There's There were sacrifices and, you know, there was discipline that was made there for them to not only have a down payment that was sizable enough for them to make you know, a big jump going into it of what they had left to pay off. But then the fact that they paid off, they made a priority to not have a housing payment once they bought that home. It shows that they did not overhouse themselves, that they made the decision, you know, that they made a smart decision about their housing. If you're just joining us, uh, we're we're covering uh, some of the comments from folks in the Repeaters private Facebook group. You can join that. All you have to do is go to Facebook. Uh, and search the repeaters and uh, you'll be part of our private group. And we just talk about personal finance topics. Uh, I I thought one of the questions we asked last week, some of the answers were interesting. What are your work-life balance tips? A guy named Alvin had some good perspective here. Uh, Taking time off that has nothing to do with a vacation has been very helpful to me and balancing all that life throws at you. I've often heard this practice referred to as a mental health day. These days allow me to get a few extra hours of sleep, a quality workout in, an opportunity to run errands, and at least one or two leisure activities. It's, it is like having a weekend during the middle of the week. Also, learning to say no allows for balance. If when I ask myself, does saying yes to this request get me closer to my goals, results in a no answer, uh, uh, if it results in a no, then the answer is no. The only exception, exception is if I'm helping a family or friend that I want to be of assistance to. Nicole, I'm a huge proponent of mental health days as yeah. it relates to uh, work-life balance. And around our offices here, we highly encourage those to uh, take uh, mental health days. I liked another one, too, was there There was a comment of she puts her phone in the kitchen drawer when she gets home so she's not distracted when she's spending time with her family. And it's one of those, what a, what a great... Gosh, I like, wish I did that. I know, I do, too. Especially in the mornings, too, of staying off your phone. I think it's important to stay off your phone. And I, case in point, I've not been on my phone very much during a lot of the mornings this week. This morning, decided to jump on my phone and dig into some things. And I had a not-so-great morning. And left, you know, kind of frustrated, not having a nice conversation with my special friend. Yeah. And it, all of it goes back to we're, a lot of us just are constantly consuming and consuming and consuming content. I know. When we don't need to be. And then you heard Return of the Mac and it all got better. And then it all got better. Let's do this. Let's take a break. We'll come back with biggest waste of money of the week and more. This is the Pete the Planner Show. And I am... Pete the Planner. 